<laughs> Sue Costello, what's up, Sue? What's up, buddy? Now, Sue, you're from Boston. You hear Whitey Bulger might have had a person killed? Yes, I did hear that. <laughs> It's terrible. Yeah, it is. Well, all uh, the people I grew up with, my mother's calling me, talking to me about all the people that died from the neighborhood. And you're yeah, kidding me, no, really? My dad's like the guy. So at he the bar. he affected your your oh family. Oh my God! The, my dad, uh, Eddie Connors, was the guy that owned the bar in the neighborhood, right on the. In, I grew up in Savin Hill, which isn't South Boston. It's the next neighborhood over. Right. And they killed Eddie Connors and Morrissey Boulevard. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. So uh, so this is like personal for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Wow. Well, see, the, see, I think he's 83 years old, which makes him more dangerous than ever. He's got nothing to lose. Oh no, he doesn't. Like, why? I'm saying, why not dangerous. just get rid of get rid of people? At and this Steve Flemmy was on the uh, stand with him the past two days. Yeah. So they were like staring each other down, and I was thinking, imagine all the emotions that go on because he's still a human being. Oh, forget it. Right? And yeah. No, it's just, a real drama. Yeah, they said the tension was like incredible. They were all tweeting from Nesson. Oh, they were. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure guys like Whitey Bulger, gangsters love Twitter. That's like their favorite <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, I guess still think he wants to be famous. People just yapping. Now that's yeah. the thing. That's what did in John Gotti and a lot of gangsters in the past. It's what did in Bugsy Siegel back in the day. They they wanted to be famous. Yeah. You know, guys like uh, you know uh, Lucky Luciano didn't care about the fame. They just wanted to get you know mega rich from crime. Well, the thing about Bugsy him, Siegel wanted to be famous. The thing about Bulger too is that he was so charismatic that he was almost uh, ladies man. Not, not only a ladies' man, but he was like Santa Claus in a way in the neighborhood. Everybody looked to him for help, but he was also infiltrating the neighborhood with all the drugs, and he was... That's the, that's the paradox with, um, with a lot of these gangsters, is Gotti was the same way. The whole neighborhood supported him because he, you know, would help out old ladies and everything like that. But at the same time, he's just raping the whole mm -hmm. city, you know. Well, that's going to be fascinating. It's, it's probably going to be an interesting trial. They'll probably make a movie out of the trial, but uh, I don't know. Like, The Departed, I guess it was loosely based on him, but they can't, you know. They couldn't I, do it. They would never be, they were never able to do it completely, and they weren't able to, Brotherhood was based on that, too. That's why they moved it to Providence. Because There's it was, been a lot of movies sort of about him, Because right? they could never do it, because Billy Bulger's is his brother. Right. Oh, when I had my TV show, I remember <laughs> when I had Costell, they were like, shoot, when I had to go, you have to do the... Um, you know, the press junket yeah. where all the critics are there. And, yeah. and they told me that they didn't like my show so that nobody would show up, like, at the critics thing. Right. And I peeked out the curtain and, like, it was packed. <laughs> packed. And I was like, oh, I better get my act together. You know, I wasn't ready. <laughs> and I remember I, I did a good job. They were laughing. They were laughing. And the last guy got up and he said, uh, he said, Sue, I have a question for you. Right. I said, what? He said, if you could have either Bulger on your show, which one would you have? I said, Whitey, of course, because if I caught him, I'd get good ratings. <laughs> <laughs> but no kidding. Yeah, well, well Billy is a, is a senator. So we're like he a, a was. He was the Senate or... president, and then he was the president of UMass Boston. It's an and, insane yeah. story. Yeah. It really is. Well, uh, anyway, uh, so how the, the One Woman Show went great, huh? Oh, my gosh, it went awesome. Now, awesome. tell me about it. You had, what theater was it in? I was at the Acme Comedy Theater in, on La Brea. Right. Yeah, on La Brea. Yeah. Okay, I know yeah. who that is. And I've it sold it. out every night. Okay. Yeah, and, and I wish I could have kept it going, which the, it was too bad I didn't have more money to keep it going because it would have the word of mouth and the people. I mean, I just, it was such. Did you I, film it? I didn't film it, no. You're not ready to film it yet? You no, I want to film it. You know, it's funny. I saw Tyson's show last night. Uh, oh, you were there? Uh, was it good? Yeah. Oh, God, I can't wait to see it. Oh, my God. I wish I saw it. Mike Tyson, you know, did his one-man show about his life. They filmed it for HBO I last night. Right. Spike Lee directed yeah, it, right? Yeah, Spike Lee directed it. I can't it. wait. No, it's, wow. uh, it's, 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 it's about his life, his whole life. It's like, about his whole life. and But but to watch him physically perform, I mean, as a stand-up, I was watching him, and I was thinking, gosh, he pulls it together. I mean, he... He did it. He's funny. Yeah. No, he, I've always thought he was mm. funny. Uh, he always He's always had a crazy sense of humor. But there's one thing about having a crazy sense of humor... In an interview on a talk show and being able to do a one-man show and I mean, physically he was like out of breath a little bit sometimes and i was like it's just even to see that is like you know he went from being this guy he used who to box yes. 15 rounds <laughs> yeah. and now he's out of shape from acting well, but it's so funny so oh, it's one thing to have a crazy sense of humor but it, it's an entirely different thing to be crazy right yeah. like i i always <laughs> thought that he was crazy i mean well, he was Biting yeah. people's faces off. Well, but think, he talks about there's, that. There's some of that. Too. Yeah. yeah. It would be fascinating to it's see. It's fascinating that show. to watch I, somebody who you think is crazy talk about being crazy. Now, well, I, it's cool the way he <laughs> has gotten it back together, like yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. Like seeing him in uh, The Hangover mm -hmm. was hilarious. Well, that was you know, a perfect, in a different a perfect, light. It was a perfect way to, to use it. It was a perfect joke. But yeah. what does he say about the, the ear thing? What about he, the, does he say he just lost it when he bit uh, Amanda Holyfield's ear? Yeah, he said he just blacked out. Well, he gone ba bankrupt. It all went down with Don King first. Don King. Right. Does he get uh, mad at Don, Don King? Don King owned the, owned the uh, image, owned his image, which uh, is Don stuff King, that we can understand. No, I know. Right? Don King ripped him off. So owned his he, image. Is he mad at Don King? 
in he the, did, in the but show. he doesn't completely. He doesn't completely bash him. No, he yeah, does a good are... job with Robin Givens, man. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Does he leave that? Part? <laughs> I, I I read in the uh, the previews where he told the story about Brad Pitt and Robin Givens. Yeah, yeah. Is that in there? Yeah. That's totally the best thing there. I like. But Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt. Was... Well, the story is <laughs> the story is where uh, when he was married to Robin Givens, uh, he caught her cheating on him with Brad Pitt. No, 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 no. no. They way. were they were getting they were going through the divorce, and he was going to see his attorney to tell the attorney how awful she was. But a even after they were separated, they were still having sex. So before he went to the attorney, I mean, I don't know if I should be giving it all away, but uh, before he went this to was the attorney, all in, this was all in the newspaper. Oh, okay. I, I haven't seen it. Before yet. he went to the attorney, he wanted to go have sex with her. <laughs> so he, he showed That's up at hot. the house and he tells the story. He's like, and I saw the car coming up the hill because I knew it was her car because I bought it. Right. Uh. <laughs> he goes, and then I see this person and I think it's one of her white friends from the um, from the who's the be save the bell or whatever. He goes, and then all of a sudden it's Head Brad Pitt. Yeah. He goes, Brad Pitt. But he wasn't known at that point, Brad no. Pitt, really. No. So he was like had like a mullet or something. Yes, but can you imagine getting out of the car and <laughs> having Mike Tyson be in there? Now, so what did Brad Pitt say? Something like, please don't strike me or something? He said he, he said, did some don't... weird like. <laughs> really? Brad Pitt did that? Yeah. yeah. He did like some a karate weird... thing? Yeah. He said he wasn't scared. He did some weird like, hey, man. That's a bad and move. And did like weird like karate kid thing. Oh, I heard he said to a Tyson, please don't strike me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and Tyson talks about having to go to the, um, I almost cried at one point when he talked about having to go to the speech therapist. He had to go uh -huh. get a vocal coach to be able to, people to understand him on stage. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's really vulnerable. He's, and then meanwhile, I'm sitting there, right? And so this girl's up there dancing like crazy, like, woo. What girl? Well, you know, one of the black girls. She's like, woo, going Wait, they, in the audience. In the show? No, in the audience. Oh, what are they the dancing show. to? There's music? The music. They have a DJ. Oh, okay. The guy said he's the greatest DJ in the world that God recommended him. <laughs> it was great. The oh, whole thing was great. God. But all of a sudden, so the camera guy's there, and all of a sudden, I hear somebody yelling, hey, hey, hey. And from the corner, it's Spike Lee screaming at me. I keep tap him, tap him, tap him. Oh, oh, oh. So I tap the camera guy, and yeah. he's like, harder, harder, tap him harder. I'm like, all right. So I tap the guy, and the camera guy turns around. And I'm like, really? hey, he wants you to film her. And I'm like, can I use that as a credit now? <laughs> <laughs> I, tell you, I was, I was, an, I was an extra one time in my life, and after I did it, I vowed I'd never do it again. Me and my buddy Deej, we were trying to, you know, break into show business, doing whatever. It was uh, 1990, summer of '90. So we were, I was like 21 years old. And uh, they were shooting Jungle Fever. Mm -hmm. And there was an ad in uh, Backstage uh, magazine. It said, uh, uh, featured performers or whatever wanted, which is they have some fancy word for extra, right. background artists, wanted uh, for a Spike Lee movie um, to be shot in Harlem. Uh, Jungle Fever with Wesley Snipes and whatever. So uh, uh, we sent in our headshots and our lame resumes, and we got called to be there. We had to be at 136th Street in Lenox, in the heart of Harlem, man, mm -hmm. uh, at an actual crack den that he found, because he wanted it to be realistic, to shoot this scene. And the scene ended up being, uh, Wesley Snipes was barely known at the time. He, he had done um, uh, uh, Major League. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Samuel, Samuel Jackson. Jackson yeah. And Holly Berry, who was really young, mm -hmm. no one knew. Mm -hmm. And a whole crack den filled with extras. And me and my buddy Deidre were one of the extras. And... Uh, a real hot day, and we go in there, and Spike Lee came to all the extras, and he gave us one piece of advice. <laughs> he said he was real loud, like you're talking about. He said, <laughs> "You guys are gonna get CIS. You know what that means?" And I swear, like, no. He goes, "That's crack and do stupid. <laughs> crack and do stupid. Can you get crack and do stupid?" And we're like, "I would go." He was really scary as hell. <laughs> exactly what you're talking. He's screaming at us. Screaming at me. And it was a 22-hour day. <laughs> And uh, he handed us an envelope at the end of the day, and it was uh, 20 bucks in cash. Oh. Oh. And I always said, uh, maybe I'll frame it. It's the first thing I ever made in movies. And uh, I was so hungry, uh, on the way home, I stopped at Ben's Pizza and spent the, oh. spent the 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, forget it, forget the We spent our 20 bucks on pizza. <laughs> but he, he, it's funny you said that, because he was screaming, you're going to get cracked and do oh stupid. He was, I could hear him over the music. He's yeah. like, hey. And I'm like, what? He's like, tap him, tap him. <laughs> and I mean, the poor guy. So I'm like, I tap him on the shoulder. He's like, hot <laughs> Tap him harder. Harder. Wow. <laughs> so now, what is your next game plan with your... I'm doing the show this Wednesday night. That's why I'm here. Yeah. In New York? Yes. On what 44th. Time? At 7.30. Yeah. 40... I did it early enough so that you guys could come what if you time? want. What time? 7.30. No, I mean, what, what, what's 44th? The Producers Club, 44th oh, Street. Oh, right by the old improv. Yeah, I know where that is. 44th by 9th. Yes. Okay, so 7.30. How long is the show? Hour and 15 minutes. 
We can make that. Yes. Right? We can yeah. make that. That's why I did it at 7.30. Do you, want me to buy, do you want me to buy two tickets? So wait, it's Wednesday. Uh, what, what's Wednesday's date? I'm sure I can make the it. The 24th. 24th. Yeah, that's cool. We should probably do that. Oh, my gosh. Adi, I'm, s- wait t- I'm telling you. I want to say, I, glitch, I can't wait. When I did it in L.A., because L.A. is, like, very, like, money-oriented. Right, and, like, right, right. When I, I mean, they were, like, even the guy at the theater, he's like, Sue, I've never seen people wait outside the theater like that for you. Good. For anybody. All right, listen, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk more off the air and uh, about uh, about that. We'll, uh, we'll come back with more Sue Costello after this.